Hey, I thought I'd just offer some quick ideas to go with the homework today. What you'll see as you're looking at your screen is the first problem is talking about taking uh, polygon P to polygon Q and talking about making sure that you're using a translation, rotation, or reflection. The very first thing I would like to remind you of is the examples that we have in every single part of your lesson summary. When we talk about an example right here, we have an example of translation. We have an example of rotation. Use these as your sentence starters or your sentence frame, something to help you to remember what parts and components go with each one. When we're talking about precision of language here, if we have a translation, we have to talk about moving it either along a vector or we're talking about moving this, in this case, a quadrilateral along from a point to a point. When we talk about a rotation, we have to include the measurement describing the angle of the rotation as well as the direction and a center point. Don't forget that reflection, we have to talk about name the figure first. We have to talk about how we reflect it across some line and that line should have a name. When we look at our work right here, one of the strategies that I would suggest doing, take a look at P and I'm going to suggest using your patty paper, sketch it, and then I want you to to use that patty paper to look, there's point D, C, B, and A, and bring it over to this figure and figure out what do I need to do. Obviously, if I'm moving it over, that means there's a translation. I'm going to note that. I'm going to have to have something about translation. And then when I get it over to here, I see that it's not the same. So I'm going to suggest you rotate and see if it fits under rotation. I see that it will fit under rotation. So what I want to decide is where am I going to translate from where to where and how am I going to rotate? For me, I'm looking for under my translation, I'm looking for corresponding points, meaning points that are in the same position. Don't forget about that piece. Corresponding points. So points lying in the same position or spot on the figure. So when I look at this, I look at this point A, and then when I go and line this up, I can see all of the different points that are corresponding. H and A are corresponding, D and G, um, C and F, B and E. Those are all corresponding locations. So when I'm looking at my translation, I see like A and H seems the most reasonable to me. So I'm going to talk about my translation from A to H. And then when I'm looking at the rotation, I'm going to remember that I'm on this isometric paper. And so my rotations have to be in measurements of 60 degrees. Play with that. I'm going to think about the same thing for letter B. I'm going to probably take my, I'm going to take my figure. I'm going to go ahead and just sketch it. Again, sketching P because we're taking P to Q, taking all the points, and then I'm going to bring it down to this figure, and I'm going to rotate and see. Uh, it's, that's close, but that's not quite right. So that tells me right now that I am going to have some rotation, but at the same time, I'm going to have to also include a reflection, flipping it over to make sure that it fits. So I'm going to head back to this. I see some corresponding points. Perhaps what I need to do with this is do a translation and a rotation and then make a reflection. Finally, I would suggest like this right here, getting it all lined up. I see that point A maps to point F. Those are really close. So that's where I'm going to use my translation. I'm going to be looking for a translation from A to F. I'll bring it down to here. And then I know that I'm going to have to rotate. Pay attention to what point you're rotating around. It looks like we're rotating around point F. And I'm going to leave it to you to figure out degrees. Keep in mind we're on an isometric plane, so we're working in increments of 60 degrees. And then we have to talk about a reflection. In this case, you want to talk, talk about your reflection across a line. And this line is containing... Uh, contains the segment F, G, 
that would be your best way to talk about it. The final one is a free hand. And it's just asking, how do I get this figure to this figure? Well, again, take that same piece, P to Q, and make sure. We need to make sure that they're actually the same figure and that they're the exact same figure. Otherwise, the transformation process that we're trying to work through is pretty much a waste of time. I bring it over here, and I see immediately that no matter what I do, this isn't going to line up. But what, what I saw first was when I brought it over here, that looked like a mirror image, which was kind of cool. So I know that I'm going to translate, and then I'm going to reflect, and I should be done. So watch the video again and again if you have to, and then uh, work through your assignment. Remember, that's all the further you have to go through. There's just three of them. I need precise language. Use these examples from today's work to help you write precise descriptions of each transformation. You guys did a great job in class today. I'm very happy with how we're doing so far. Thank you for your hard work. I'm very glad to see you each day. Make sure you have a great afternoon. Finish up this work. Take care.